The guidelines are also very inclusive of everyone in terms of their physical ability. People who have perhaps a chronic disease or a disability can still find ways to get physical activity, even if they can't walk. And so that's very much built into the guidelines. The updated physical activity guidelines for Americans recommends moving more, sitting less, and getting kids as young as three to be active. In addition, the new federal guidelines stress that any amount of and any type of exercise helps health. On today's Sound Living, the benefits of physical activity. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist Sherilyn Jackson, who also serves as the state coordinator of Walk Kansas, says the new guidelines emphasize getting people to move more throughout the day. In a nutshell, the revised physical activity guidelines just create more evidence and support for the need to be active throughout your entire day and just to move whenever possible. You know, we've done a really good job over the years of engineering physical activity out of our lifestyle. And now it's coming full circle, and and we're trying to think of more and more ways to become more active again. So we really need to then start planning how we're going to get some movement in our day? That's right. Any way that you can get it. For example, in my office, I've taken the copier out completely, so I have to walk down the hall whenever I copy something. If you can move your trash can away from your desk, anything that's going to make you get up out of your chair and take a few steps. We're also looking at some of those things where we maybe build this into our schedule because I know that Extension has a number of programs that encourage people to move. Walk Kansas is one that you're in charge of. The Stay Healthy, Stay Strong program also along those same lines. So maybe it's not always just during the day, but maybe we need to dedicate some time for this. Exactly. There's several ways to look at the new guidelines in that they're encouraging you to take more steps throughout your day, however you can get them. But we also know that the most benefit to our health comes when we are concentrating on getting at least moderate intensity level activity. That's going to have the most positive impact on our health. And so while they really encourage you to just get more steps throughout your day. Those guidelines that we've had now for 10 years that say 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week minimum, those are still in the recommendations. And that's something that we can do, as you say, not necessarily in those 10-minute increments, but maybe it's just getting up and walking from room to room or doing a lap around the building or something like that. And taking the stairs whenever you can. I encourage people to not use an elevator unless you absolutely have to. Always try to take the stairs. Try to think of ways that you can create habits for yourself that are going to encourage you to take more steps. Parking at the furthest end of a parking lot when you go shopping. Anything that's going to get you to take a few more steps. When you come to work, park in a parking lot that's a little bit further away from the building where you work. Whatever it might be. And maybe not even always using this, the most level route, but maybe doing a route that has some hills where you have to climb and exercise some other muscles. That's right. And that's a good point that you just brought up because in these recommendations, it's, it's also about getting a variety of activity. It's really important that we have variety of activity that includes all types of things. While we promote walking a lot because almost everyone can do that, the guidelines are also very inclusive of everyone in terms of their physical ability People who have perhaps a chronic disease or a disability can still find ways to get physical activity, even if they can't walk. And so that's very much built into the guidelines. You mentioned the walking, and that's important because that's often the first thing that a doctor will recommend because you don't want people going out there and overdoing it because they risk injury and They also probably are going to get burned out real quick if they try and do it just all at once. It's kind of a marathon instead of a sprint. But the walking is a great place to start. It's a really good place, and it's important to start at whatever level that you're at. For most people, they can do the basic walking, but to know that if you can get to that moderate intensity level where you can just barely carry on a conversation, that's when you're doing the most benefit in general for your body. To get an average of 30 minutes, five days a week of that type of activity is still what we promote. There's a lot of benefits that come from getting more movement. What are some of those benefits? Well, the guidelines are really taking a look at what those benefits are. And I think what they've learned over the past 10 years from our first set of physical activity guidelines is that there are far more health benefits to being physically active on a regular basis than we ever even knew about when they were created 10 years ago. And a lot of those benefits are things that we've perhaps have taken for granted. 
One of the main benefits is in our ability to get better sleep because just getting that physical activity is really helpful in getting good rest. Also, there's a lot of benefits for brain health and cognitive development that's for children as well, all the way through older adults and prevention of of dementia, that type of thing. So they're seeing lots and lots of brain health benefits. They're also looking at how physical activity can impact you immediately in feeling some of these things as well as over the long term. We both know that if you're having a a stressful day and, and you're just feeling really overwhelmed, you go take a short walk and you come back and your mind is kind of cleared. This is a good example of how physical activity can have a positive impact on your health almost immediately. There's also all kinds of benefits for many different types of chronic disease and either prevention of the chronic disease or, really importantly, managing chronic disease. We do know that seven out of the ten most common types of chronic disease respond to physical activity in a positive way, either in terms of management or prevention of that particular chronic disease. Bone strengthening activities and flexibility and all of that also comes into play here? Exactly. The physical activity guidelines are inclusive of all types of activities. So that includes aerobic, where you're using more oxygen, you're getting your heart rate up. So it includes aerobic activity. It also includes strengthening activities at least two days per week where you develop the muscle strength. And this gets more and more important as we get older in knowing that we're losing our muscle mass just just by that process of aging. And so we really want to promote that to all adults, but particularly as you get older. And is that primarily through the use of bands or just light weights? Is that what we're looking at here? There's all different types of ways to do that. You can use the resistance bands. You can also use your own body weight. You can use the hand weights or in our Stay Strong, Stay Healthy class, we we do use ankle weights as well. You don't want to use the ankle weights if you're walking. You're just using them for the prescribed exercises. And so there's various ways just to get some kind of resistance, be it your own body weight, a resistance band, or, or weights. Balance is also something that we're really promoting, especially for older adults. Exactly. And as you strengthen the muscles, you're also improving your balance in that process and your ability to adjust to those surfaces that are uneven for walking and preventing falls, that type of thing. And so all of those exercises work together to help you reduce falls, to be able to maintain your balance, and also strengthen the muscles so you can do the activities that you want to do. We hear most often from our our older adults in these classes that they are delighted they can do more things with their grandchildren, or that they can remain more independent, that they can have the ability to do more things for themselves. Well, you mentioned grandchildren, and really this needs to kind of start at that younger age because there are a lot of things that kids do that really are a lot of the the things that we're recommending for older adults. Exactly. We were talking earlier about activities you did as kids like jumping rope where you're you're jumping and you're getting that feeling that kind of jar when you your feet come back to the ground. That's even part of one of our, our level two stay strong, stay healthy is to get a little bit of that jarring, just doing a small hop where you can build that. That's what builds the bone strength. And and so a lot of things that we do as kids, if we could just maintain some of that kind of activity and energy level and just moving, just getting that movement throughout the day. When it comes to recommendations for children, are there anything that they need to do that maybe adults don't need to do? Well, the recommendation for children to have activity at a certain amount per day is is actually twice what we recommend for adults. So at least 60 minutes every day for ages 6 to 17. And a lot of that's the moderate intensity aerobic activity. Anything that gets their heart beating a little bit faster will count. And we really want children to get at least three days out of that week to get some vigorous intensity aerobic activity. We've talked a lot about the moderate, but it's also important. The vigorous activity even for adults, if they can get a little bit of that, is even more beneficial. And one of the ways adults can do that is just by adding some intervals. So let's say that you're walking at a moderate intensity speed, and then for about 30 seconds, you walk just as fast as you can, and then you bring it back to that moderate intensity. And do that a couple of times during your walk, and you're going to boost your personal fitness level a lot more quickly by doing that than just by doing that moderate intensity walk. And so children, we also recommend that vigorous intensity aerobic activity for them at least three days a week. So we need to stop telling kids to stop running, right? That's right. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right. Because that's really part of it, isn't it? And is that why maybe adults don't do as much as 
they used to because they feel kind of out of place when they're doing some of these activities? That could be because, you know, we don't want to look look out of place or look funny doing it. Or, or I've heard some people say, I don't think I could ever run again. Uh, you might be surprised. And so to just give that a shot, you don't have to go out and run, but just work at a level where you're pushing yourself a little bit harder than you were before and just building on that. It doesn't have to be sustained for a long time. 30 seconds to a minute is plenty to start adding intervals. There's a lot of trackers out there that people can use. It's not necessary, but if you're really trying to maybe keep track of things without having to do it yourself, that is something that some people might find useful. A lot of people do, and I think a good way to use a fitness tracker is for a couple of days if you first get one, just see how many steps are you getting in your average day. And that's going to vary for everybody. If you get kind of an average number that's maybe going to be around five to 6,000 steps per day, and if you think in terms of getting 30 minutes of moderate intensity walking activity, let's say, that's going to end up being about close to that 4,000 steps that we are asking people to get five days per week. And so that would bump you up to around that 10,000 step level. And so if that's your goal to get 10,000 steps a day, that's that's pretty good. I think over time we may even see recommendations higher than that for the number of steps per day. Again, it's it's an individual thing. There's a general recommendation of you've heard 10,000 steps per day or the 150 minutes per week, but it really depends on the individual and starting where you're at and then just increasing that amount. One of the things I'll just mention when you think about physical activity is that some is better than none, more is better than some, and too much is hard to get. So if you think about that philosophy that some is better than none, more is better than some, too much is hard to get, apply that to your day and just realize that any activity is going to be better than nothing at all. And keep in mind that some days you are going to be more active than other days. And to not get discouraged if you don't get as many steps one day, you can always make it up the next day. That's right. And it's a lot like our healthy eating recommendations is that you may not get the same types of nutrients. It's not really what you eat in one given day. It's how it's spaced out throughout a week that probably matters more. There are a number of recommendations. And Really, the whole idea here is to just keep moving, and that's something that they can do through several extension programs. And if they have more questions, they can always contact their local extension office. That's right. Most of the extension offices in Kansas are offering the the Walk Kansas program. Also, a lot of them offer Stay Strong, Stay Healthy. And to start with your local office about one of those two programs, or maybe there's something else that's going on in your community that your local extension agent's a part of. And Walk Kansas, believe it or not, will be starting up not that far away. It's really getting pretty close. The Walk Kansas dates for 2019 are March 17 through May 11. And we're in the process, actually, of gearing up to offer that program. And it's just a basic program for anyone that wants to focus on getting more regular physical activity. And again, it's based on personal goals, not on on who's able to walk the furthest or do the most. It's really on just setting a goal and then in teams and in groups achieving that goal. And you always kind of try to match the recommendations. So there may be a few modifications, but really nothing major. No major changes, but we'll certainly attune the program to the revised physical activity guidelines and highlight a lot of the health benefits that come from physical activity. And there are a lot more than we've we've even talked about. And they found, uh, just, just to kind of summarize a little bit, they found that even more types of cancer can be prevented with physical activity or reduced or prevented. And also, and I think an important message to send out is that people that have a chronic disease, such as cancer or heart disease or diabetes, physical activities is a real tool for helping to manage that chronic disease. And so those are all wrapped into those recommendations. And we'll be bringing out bits and pieces of that throughout the Walk Kansas program to help people become more informed. That's K-State Research and Extension Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist and State Coordinator of Walk Kansas, Sherilyn Jackson. Contact the county or district extension office to learn more about the physical activity opportunities being offered in your community. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. And this is the K-State Radio Network.